it's really cool to watch. Um, the, the guy is hungry for every opportunity, um, and I think you see his will um, in the way he runs the ball. So, um, you know, down around the goal line, a lot of times uh, the perfect play doesn't exist, and it's uh, um, a battle of wills, and, and he's not a guy that a lot of people want to tackle. That was Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel on Raheem Moster. What an experience, so Mike McDaniel. So good. It's, you know what? It's genuine. That's really him. I love it's it. Not, it's not, a, it's not a bit. It. It's not an I act. It's, it's just, just him. Yeah. And awesome. that's why, uh, you know, one of the many reasons the Dolphins have had an incredible year. And Raheem Moster, it's a huge part of that. Yes, 17 sir. carries, 115 yards, two touchdowns, three catches. And they, he also caught a touchdown in this game. As it stands right now, Matthew, he is the top running back from the weekend across fantasy. Raheem must start for a reason. Second game of the season with 20 touches. It's only uh, two such games in his career prior to this. And he was a monster, right? Three, uh, three touchdowns adds to his leading NFL 11 touchdowns from scrimmage this season. He's scored in five of the six games he's played so far this season. On the year, he's running back three in fantasy points per game, 23.2. Uh, look, they got, they got down 14. It was funny. They were they were 14 and a half point underdog. Uh, oh, they were 14 and a half point favorites heading into this game. They got down 14, so in essence they're down 28, 28 and a half, and they ended up covering. <laughs> they, 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 like, easily, thing. easily. The Panthers had a 14 nothing lead. Uh, later in the game, got an interception return touchdown. Yeah, still didn't come close to covering. It's, <laughs> it's insane. It is insane. Even up, uh, even down 14 nothing, the Dolphins were like minus 160 oh money God, line favorites insanity. because it was just it felt inevitable they were going to come back, and and so they did. Yeah, I mean, so again, we'll see whether Jeff Wilson Jr. gets activated this week and whether he, he continues to cut into the workload. But even like again, so obviously this game helps a lot, but. Raheem Mostert is a, you know, top 12-ish running back, even even in a timeshare with Jeff Wilson Jr. or when, when Devon A. Chan comes, uh, comes back. So, listen, you think about Raheem Mostert, you know, on the other uh, side of 30. Adam Thielen, who we're going to talk about, Travis Kelsey. Like, let's hear it for the old guys helping you win fantasy. It's been good. Raheem Mostert is RB2 in fantasy this season. Yeah. That includes three weeks of uh, – his running back partner, Devin H. Chan, being the best player in football. So, yeah. uh, incredible season for Raheem Mostert. No real reason that he should slow down for the next few weeks either. It's always staying healthy for Raheem Mostert. Yeah. And so far, so good. Jay, a massive day for Matthews rider, Die Amon Ross St. Brown. He's wide receiver one coming out of the weekend. Catches 12 of 15 targets, 124 yards, and the touchdown in a game where Jared Goff looked awesome in he this game. He did look awesome. Amazing block here oh, from Craig Reynolds to get Amon Craig. Ra into the end zone. I think this is a really good sign for Detroit's offense going forward. The fact that, look, I understand Tampa Bay in October isn't Buffalo in December, but golf outdoors has been a problem his entire career. And the fact that he was able to have that type of game. And also I think it bodes well for the Detroit pass catchers if, you know, Dave Montgomery's gonna miss some time, Jimmy yes. Gibbs is banged up. All these pass catchers are gonna get work, mainly Mon Ra, but also Jameson Williams, Matthew. Yeah, no, no question at all. D Jameson Williams had like an absolutely brilliant catch uh, in this particular game as well for a touchdown. It was nice to nice to see that as well. Um, and to your point about Amon Ra, St. Brown, right? They're they're going to be without their run. They're going to have to be more pass heavy in their upcoming schedules. We talked about they're at Baltimore, then home to Vegas, then they've got the bye, then they're at the Chargers. So the schedule lays out pretty nicely for them. You're not really scared about. Baltimore as well. Sam Laporta, 11 targets in this game, but just four for 36. He was disappointing somewhat, but given the fact that he was a little bit banged up coming into the game, not uh, not surprising. But this is his first game back on Mon Ra from injury. Great to see him picking up right where he left off, locked in RB, uh, wide receiver one. Big night on Sunday Night Football for Stephon Diggs, who has yet another 100-yard game. That's his fourth in a row. He's targeted 16 times. It feels like every offseason, Matthew, we have this conversation of the Bills have finally found that number two. They, they draft Kincaid. Gabe Davis has his moments. At the end of the day, the volume for Stephon Diggs when Josh Allen is under center, which is always, is just astronomical. Look, Josh Allen did not play well last night. He didn't. No. You know, credit the – and yet, still, Stephon Diggs had his fourth straight 100-yard game. He's on pace – for 139 receptions this year. He's like, it's weird. We, you know, we talk about some of these other guys. Stefan Diggs very quietly is having a monster fantasy season. He's just been nothing short of terrific as we enter Monday Night Football. He's the wide receiver seven on the year. He couldn't get into the end zone. I mean, 
backup tight end and Deontay Hardy. What are you going to do? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, D none of this is, is surprising. Diggsies is the man. To be fair. Friend of the podcast, Stephon Diggs. Friend of the podcast. The Deontay Hardy touchdown was basically Stephon Diggs because four defensive players followed him across right. formation. Fortunately, they don't get credit for that in fantasy. But, I mean, Diggs, he's just not quite – he's just not as fast as Tyreek Hill or Jamar Chase, so he's not as explosive. He doesn't have the same 70-yard touchdown runs that the Cheetah has. But he's just locked and loaded. The target share isn't going anywhere. It will get colder in Buffalo. His production tails off in the second half of the season, but he's going to be a top-five wide receiver. You know who's also not very fast is Adam Thielen at this point of his career, and it doesn't matter. He catches 11 to 13 targets for 115 yards and a touchdown. And, Jay, I think most importantly – Yes, mostly in the first half, but Bryce Young looked like the guy they thought they were getting when the Panthers came out of the tunnel of this game. Yeah, and sneakily, he Bryce Young looked better against the Lions as well in the previous week where he was able to put up yards even if it was mostly in garbage time. And Adam Thielen, to me this is the most shocking thing in fantasy this year. Adam Thielen is wide receiver three right now. The only two guys in front of him are Tyreek Hill and Stephon Diggs. He's narrowly in front of Jamar Chase, AJ Brown. Like, it's completely insane what he's doing. And you would just say that it's unsustainable because how could it not be unsustainable? But at the same time, I think that if he stays healthy, he's going to be a top 12, 15 wide receiver going forward on this volume. That's the only, that's the only question is, can he stay healthy, right? I mean, because again, the question is always like when somebody has success, it's always like, okay, why did this happen? And is it repeatable? And so in the case of like Miami, it is repeatable, right? Because we've just seen how fast those guys are, how well he schemes the offense. Tyreek Hill is insanely fast. Well, in the sense of Adam Thielen, like, it's a bad defense. They're constantly going to be in negative game script. They're constantly throwing, and they look to Adam Thielen quite a bit, right? And so, and he's also, he plays the slot where often there's softer coverage as well. He's had 10 receptions and 100 receiving yards in three of the past four games, right? Since the second week of the season, he's the second best wide receiver in fantasy. Fifth straight game with 15 or more fantasy points. He's had 20 or more in four of those games. Like, this is, I, it is all sustainable because of, He's talented. They throw it a lot. Bryce Young is sort of locked in on him. Bryce Young feels like kind of a first-read quarterback at this point uh, of his career. And they're going to be a negative game script all the time. Absolutely. All right, the next one here, Drake London in a game, guys, where we got to see what it's like when Desmond Ritter, uh, the training wheels are taken off a little bit, and it yeah. got ugly at times. Ritter threw ooh, three ooh, picks ooh. in this game. He, he had 40. Where's Lawrence? He'll be here so Wednesday. Call Lawrence. He will be here. It, Ritter had 47 attempts in this game. And one of the biggest beneficiaries of that was Drake London, who gets 12 targets and gets 125 yards out of those targets. All right. So <laughs> that was the pickup line on Friday, wasn't yeah. it? Drake London? Yeah. Over 44 and a half. Well done. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Triple it. Um, Triple it. Here's what I would say. <laughs> Here's what I would say Almost. is that, um, and I think I bought it. I think I went home with you for yeah, the Drake. Yeah. Because well, you go I, home with me a lot. I forget what the cause whether it's, it's Drake some, London or for other sometimes it's just your, organic your, reasons. Yeah, sometimes it's just your, uh, your boyish good looks. Um, uh, and, you know, a couple of two margaritas. <laughs> uh, here's the only concern. So the positives are, here's the positives. Like, they, Desmond Ritter was aggressive. Like, he made some boneheaded mistakes here. Um, but... He was aggressive. He threw the ball. It was a great game for both Drake London and Kyle Pitts. Finally, free Kyle Pitts, right? Finally did it, right? And so, um, and their upcoming schedule lends them lends itself to that. They're at Tampa Bay. They're at Tennessee. Home to Minnesota. At Arizona. All defenses that you can throw on. All teams with secondaries that have struggled so far this year, similar to the last two games. The concern is that they lost this game. Like, Arthur Smith opened up the playbook, they threw a ton, and it didn't work. <laughs> so you know what he's thinking. Yeah. I'm never, never again. thrown again. The Alamo yeah, for Arthur exactly. Smith. 100%. You know what this offense needs is even more Tyler Algier. That's what we need. More Tyler Algier. I, I, don't get me started. The Drake London, back-to-back -back games now with six for 75. Fifth straight game with at least six-plus targets. He had a 23% target share over that time frame. I think he is good enough that I think he can sort of, like, he's now – back into the wide receiver range where you drafted him. You feel good about this. Also on the road at Tampa Bay. Back-to-back -back games with 14 or more fantasy points for Kyle Pitts here as well. Even though John o. Smith got his as well, it was nice to see Kyle Pitts score a touchdown on American soil. God bless that. God bless America. God bless America. Um, I'm buying it more than I'm not, guys. Yeah. I mean, I was, just sure. when you thought you were out. I just, I, Ritter was so bad in this game. Like, Washington's defense isn't good. And yet, you know, they forced a number of turnovers in this game, Jay. Yeah, it wasn't 
great from Desmond Ritter from a football perspective. But fantasy-wise, I think you take a lot of heart from this week and last week. Last week when he was actually good, because he has shown that he can support these guys who are clearly uh, super talented. And Drake London's averaging over eight targets per game the past five weeks. And he had similar stats at the end of last year. Like, he's just going to get volume. I, I'm, and he's good. I'm less concerned about Drake London than I am t- uh, Kyle Pitts. Yeah. I don't know that we're fully out of the woods with Kyle Pitts, but oh, the bar the is so low to be a productive tight end in fantasy. Like, I'm willing to, like, all right. Yeah, maybe, you know? Yeah, so there we go. Uh, yeah, and, and it'll, by the way, if Tampa Bay, if they don't have Baker Mayfield, well, we'll talk about that game moving up, but I'm just, I'm nervous that they won't be in the same game script where they're throwing as much against the Buccaneers. Yep. All I'm saying. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.